Well, uh, thank you for the introduction. I am a bit ashamed of it. Um, then now, as far as this lecture is concerned, I will speak about just uh, a bit uh, as a philosopher of science, a bit, uh, a bit uh, as a logician. So I will mix these two perspectives together. Uh, there are 11 slides uh, in here in my talk to, to present to you. I will go very quickly by, by five or six first slide, and then there will be more specific on the on the uh, that follows them. Uh, the beginning is, uh, as I see some remark about this to distinguish philosophical doctrine, logician, uh, logicism, formalism, and intuitionism. And I complain that uh, they do not contribute to understanding the role which mathematics plays in knowledge formation. On, uh, this is not criticism, this is just a remark about the actual situation. I should mention that logical empiricists who uh, about the same time developed the philosophy of science did not contribute much to that issue too. So that is some, somehow an neglected area and it seems to me that um, the present talk is the, perhaps some opportunity to speak about that. Now, Uh, a few remarks about about knowledge. Uh, there are. Uh, uh, sorry, I just I forgot about. Such, such. Okay, that is all right. No. Uh, there are two approaches. Uh, sorry, the, the the first point is that. Uh, the first point is that um, the simplest is the simplest case. Uh, the question: What does it mean to know something? I have a very uh, simple answer: Just to be able to up to uh, to provide a true and properly justified belief as an answer to a specific question. Just like the question: When was Alonso Church's introduction to logic published for the first time? Uh, the second more uh, elaborate point uh, is uh, concerned with uh, my idea that uh, to understand the knowledge formation we should very seriously, this is this, this, this point, because uh, we should very seriously uh, speak about the uh, conceptual aspect of knowledge formation and uh, uh, in the case of any uh, any complex questions like, like the mechanism of chemical reaction, the, uh, 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 how to derive true conclusion from a set of true premises, we cannot answer s such question in a simple way. And in order to answer such a question, we have to start with, with forming very, um, sometimes very involved and very sophisticated conceptual apparatus in, in order to handle such a question. So, Knowledge can be divided into descriptive and conceptual, in a sense. I will turn to this point a, a bit later. Now, you may find this some, somewhat uh, a kind of uh, surprise that I am going now into some psychological question, but it will be later clear why I am doing so. Uh, uh, first remark concerns the Gestalt psychology. That was the time when psychologists noticed that we do not uh, see the world through our cessation, but through certain holistic structure uh, they call Gestalt. Uh, the, uh, at, uh, at the present time, this idea is somehow conveyed in the, in the theory of cognitive schema, which is developed on a large scale. In the same, uh, this cognitive schema which is a kind of gestalt of not a, an object, but rather a situation or a, a, a course of situation, a course of events. Uh, it's again a, a, a holistic representation of reality. Uh, now, as far as I was able to learn it from, from some text on uh, uh, cognitive psychology, uh, these ideas are covered by one term, information structure. Information structure is something 
kept in the in the subject's mind and and represent the observed observed uh, observed things. Now, uh, what is important and what will be starting point to my further comments is that people may share much the same experience. Moreover, very often they, they may exchange, exchange their views of that experience and, and they see their reaction to that experience. In that, that way, they may unify their cognitive structures. This is a very um, involved point, and, uh, but the, the, as, as far as I, I, I keep on this very um, simple level, there is nothing, nothing difficult to, to follow that idea. Uh, not nothing involved in it, actually. So, uh, uh, this point three, I, uh, this slide three, I am mentioning about information structure, which are somehow encoded in our mind in response to what we uh, what we can observe in the right. Now, concept in the uh, in this uh, traditional logic was uh, something which was represented by. Um, by uh, by what? By connotation of a term. So, so, so such terms as, as fox or fox hunting have some connotation and that was what was uh, treated as a concept. It seems to me that, uh, well, it's, uh, it's uh, not it seems to me, it's a fact uh, simply that th this representation of concept is very poor and uh, from the contemporary point of view we should say that uh, concepts are represented by our theory or theoretical models because it's a, hardly any concept, as you know very well, can be defined in separation from many other. So they have, uh, they have uh, together treated a certain complex whole and that, that, uh, that whole should be, should be somehow conveyed to those who are interested in that concept by, by, uh, uh, by as, uh, by some some uh, some kind of theory. Now look at this uh, last point here. Well, uh, oh sorry. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. okay. Uh, look at this uh, th this this point. People who share the same. Uh, uh, okay. So this this is uh, in uh, this point. So, in case of concepts such as fox and fox hunting, this is this, uh, what I said already, but it, the, the, the connotation of the, such terms as, as point, plane, straight line, the investigation in the usages of this result, just uh, this, this concept just resulted in the formation of Euclidean geometry. So, I hope that I, I presented this uh, clearly enough. Uh, this is the way in which we go from us, uh, uh, this holistic representation of, of reality to, to, to series, just uh, to some series, not to all series. Uh, for instance, Euclidean geometry. But much the same can be said about arithmetic. That is also theoretical representation of our experience which takes some holistic form. In that case, some experience which consists in the result of some operations, okay? Now, very shortly, perhaps I will skip this because uh, uh, what I'm saying here is that the, the conceptual representation of reality may become more and more complex. Copernicus representation was an enormous uh, step towards learning how the how our uh, uh, physical uh, surrounding looks like, uh, co cosmological surrounding looks like, uh, and only in this respect it was superior to Ptolemaic, to Ptolemaic picture. But then, then uh, so the Copernicus discovery opened the way to uh, formations such things as Kepler's law then Newtonian theoretical models of planetary movement and so on and so on, uh, up to today. So this, this, this uh, first of these two points I am here presenting concern, it's concern the, the conceptual, the, the, uh, uh, 
development of science. The second one is, is, is uh, mentioning just that also in that case, it is always accompanied by, by uh, uh, development of descriptive knowledge. Conceptual knowledge and descriptive knowledge go hand in hand. Okay, now I, I'm much more closer to things which are of direct interest to, to, to this conference because I want to tell you something about the idea of pragmatical settlement technique or decision technique, if you prefer this word. I am I'm, I'm not sure my English, but it, uh, perhaps it's good. Well, this is a kind of research technique and I am speaking about knowledge, so I am not speaking about not only uh, mathematical knowledge, but knowledge, knowledge as uh, concerning factual knowledge as well. Uh, so this uh, research technique, sigma, such that given a sentence, sentence selected from practically unlimited number of sentences of specific form, this is li like in a comp computational uh, problems, uh, the technique allows the inquirers who have mastered it to estimate the degree of certainty that this sentence P has a specific truth value. That is what, what settlement techniques are for, just as a, uh, calculation techniques. In order for sigma to be ideally, ideally reliable, there should be potentially unlimited number of inquirers who are able to meet the following requirement. Given any selected at random sentence P, this is a very short presentation. It, it, should, if if uh, anybody who knows statistics would like to present it in the, in the proper way, it would, take, it would take much more pages. Given any selected, selected random sentence P in the scope of sigma and given any postulated advanced margin of uncertainty with which P is supposed to be settled, please note that, that I mentioned here about this marginal certainty in this place, uh, say, say y or ni uh, uh, plus minus epsilon. Uh, yeah, marginal uncertainty, which is p is supposed to be settled. This is not mar sorry. Marginal certainty is the probability that, uh, that we are true, and uh, uh, and to be settled, that its true value is supposed to be established, any two selected at random inquirers decide their question in exactly the same way. Because we do not deal with, with uh, formal problems. So we somehow have uh, somehow purely pragmatic criteria if, 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 it's, if, if the, this uh, settlement techniques is ideal or not, and it's never completely uh, ideal. Repetibility of experiments, as uh, we know all uh, from from, from uh, school, repeatability of experiments is the basic condition of reliability of experiential techniques. Such repeatability is never ideal. Clearly, the less often the, comp the competent inquirers arrive to in inconsistent settlement of the same questions, the more reliable is the technique in order to explicate this idea in a rigorous way, one has to resort to the methods of statistics. I hope that this is clear enough. It's not a very sophisticated thing, but, uh, but the stress is put that, that there are no, nothing like in mathematics that we may say if, uh, uh, and then the duck will follow something, something else. These are statistical, statistical relations, so they are mathematical in the sense that this is uh, applied statistics. Okay. Now, let me mention this about this calculable functions. How the idea of pragmatical settlement techniques is related to that of calculable functions or predicate. A function is calculable if there is a computational settlement technique that is such that executing it reduces to carrying out calculations. It takes the form of well-defined procedure and in every respect, is, is in every respect idea. Full accuracy, full certainty, full reliability, no mistakes of inquiries. That's how the things looks from the point of view of a mathematician, from the point of view of the mathematician. 
Clearly, there are no ideal settlement techniques in the real world. So the idea of calculable function is a conceptual extrapolation of the idea of computational settlement procedure, whose successive improvements result in approaching the state of being ideal. Note that also in this case, we have some information structure in our mind, and we try to represent it by, by some theory, just like in, in case Euclidean geometry, like in, in case arithmetic, like in, case, like in the case of this calculability questions. Sorry, this is all lost somehow. I don't know how, but it's operational. Operational should be operation here. Okay, operation and consensual settlement techniques. Now, uh, calculation settlement techniques was mentioned already. Now, operation settlement techniques is just a simple matter because, uh, as you, as you, as you may imagine, that this is a problem of some physical operation. If you need to settle some, uh, some, question, some, some sort of question to result to, to measurements on temperature or measurement distance or something like that. So, so, so you are do, uh, performing some, some physical calculation and you, you, you do with operational settlement techniques. This idea of certain operational techniques and, and their role in philosophy, in philosophy of, in, uh, sorry, in knowledge formation was examined on several occasions. Now, what about this, this consensual settlement techniques? Uh, I mentioned here a consensual settlement technique consists in the technique, uh, in, the, in the, the, uh, dealing with the questions in the scope of the technique by, uh, by resorting to arguments which uh, reduce to some uh, deductive the re reduct to, uh, to some the arguments whose all steps are for the uh, professional inquirers obvious. So the arguments which, uh, which uh, uh, the inquirer consider obvious. Now, uh, from some point of view, a uh, formalist point of view, for, uh, for example, uh, <laughs> the, the, this is not the way of doing mathematics, but we know very well that this is uh, how mathematics is very often done. Uh, this, this is the next point. Maybe knowledge, mathematical knowledge included, cannot be formed without resorting to consensual settlement techniques. And I uh, present you the following quotation from Schoenfeld. I'm not going to read it, but maybe it's worse to read it. There is no obvious difficulty on giving a proof of church thesis. thesis. We have not given a precise definition. Uh, without, um, we have not given a precise definition of calculable. This is not necessarily in superable difficulty. We proved that every recursive function calculable without using such a definition. So, if we examine this proof, we see that we used only properties of calculable functions which, we, which were obvious, I call attention to this word obvious, even from our vague description of calculability. So these consensual settlement techniques um, play a quite essential role in, in, in forming knowledge. knowledge. Now, let me turn back to very a know, very well-known uh, Kant's idea of a priori knowledge. Uh, and this idea concerns, uh, of course, factual knowledge. Neighbor Euclidean geometry, not arithmetic, two Kantian examples of a priori knowledge deserve to be classified that way. At least they, they don't deserve to be classified that way, in my opinion. Ne neighbor, neither of these two disciplines was formed a posteriori thus by generalizing the outcomes of physical experiments. But they are not a priori either. Both are outcomes of investigations based on consensual settlement techniques, or exactly those techniques of which Schenfeld expressed his hope that they will offer the possibility to prove church thesis. Now, the only, uh, this next point, 
I just want to be uh, short that I, am, I, I read this. The only feasible explanation which I am able to see of the fact that these, uh, that these who contribute to formation of a, either discipline were able to reach consensus of how the issues they examined should be settled is that the settlement on which they all agree were consistent with the hidden knowledge kept in the inquirers' minds in the form of much the same information structures. So the, the, the idea is, I am presenting here, I am repeating that, is that we react to, to, to worlds running us not only in that way that we, we may experiment. We also react in that way that we unconsciously form in our brains some information structures. This uh, uh, contemporary cognitive psychology is aware of that and presents much of such, such examples. So, speaking from that perspective, Euclidean geometry, which is, uh, is a product of individual reaction to topographical relations surrounding us, and then kind of unification, unification of this, of this, of, of, of what was in that way somehow learned unconsciously by those who were exposed to this, to that kind of experience. The same, in, the same in case of arithmetic. Yes, okay. Is there a priori knowledge? And our Kantian examples of a priori knowledge is logic, which is incidentally in, in Kant's case was, uh, Kant was uh, identified with Aristotelian syllogistic. It seems feasible that the theory of two-valued logic, this, that, that of logical tautology and truth preserving logical entitlement, is the product of investigations which concern not so much any property specific to physical world, but rather to, they resulted in describing our cognitive inborn capacities. So we, we see the, the, the world in, the, in that the two uh, valued way. And that's why, why we were, were able to discover, because there was discovery, discovery which took more than 2,000 years of predicate logic. Once we discovered such a logic, then, like in the case of geometry, we, we were free to produce a much more, um, a large amount of alternative logic or alternative, uh, alternative, alternative geometries. Uh, and, uh, moreover, it, in case of in case of geometry, it turned out that some of them are better in dealing with uh, with. Um, uh, prob physical problems. Now, regardless of whether our logical knowledge is a priori or not, the more than 2,000 years history of discovery to valid logic is another example of investigation based on consensual settlement techniques. Incidentally, neither Gödel's completeness theorem nor Gödel's incompleteness theorem cannot be established without resorting to steps which are commonly approved as valid only because nobody is able to see how they can be reasonably questioned. This, this is incidentally was one of the worry, worries of Tarski, who uh, produced his uh, remarkable theory of truth in response to Gellert's result. Now I am about to finish, sorry. So mathematics is responsible, in fact responsible to extremely large extent, to that part of knowledge formation, factual knowledge included, which I have called conceptual, where beliefs acquired with the help of operational settlement techniques seem to be unquestionably of the kind which contributes to expand, expanding true to fact beliefs about the examined factual phenomena, though now it's, it's a, in, in, in no straightforward way, but this is not the point to be discussed here. The task of explaining how and to which extent conceptual knowledge contributes uh, to learning truths about the real world is much more involved. 
And final remark, because I would I, I wouldn't like to to lose this uh, this this point. If the concept of truth makes sense, and I believe it does, it makes sense as one whose formal properties, formal properties, that's what I, I want to stress, has been defined by Tarski's theory of truth or under somewhat different but equivalent approach by modern theory. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a very interesting lecture. I would like to ask, uh, you were talking about logic, two-valued logic, as something which is inborn, something which is natural. I have strong objections to this. I live in the part of the world where two-valued logic is, was never actually considered as something which can be applied to uh, reality. And all Eastern part of uh, the world believe that this is simplifying in reality. We cannot, and this is from the point of view of all Chinese tradition, two-valued logic is wrong. So in what sense we could say that logic, especially uh, in the form of two-valued lo uh, value logic, and the concept of truth, which also is completely absent in uh, all Eastern tradition. And uh, there is a uh, strong tradition of yin yang <coughs> where everything has these two sides. Nothing is black or white. Yeah, yeah. I, I see your point and uh, my answer is uh, very short. Uh, we don't, unless we think about inborn uh, properties as one we, we are specific for for a, for, every, for, every, for a specific generation, but something which through the generation is somehow developed in, the, in, our, uh, in our genetic structure. So uh, we, uh, like, like in, in the case of any animals, the, 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 uh, the, um, along with the development of, uh, of a specific species, the, the next and next generation are more and more clever, and that they, 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 they have some, some abilities inborn that that is out of question because they, they for instance, uh, for instance, birds have no school, but they know some various things how to do from the very beginning, and it it, it seems to me that the same is in case of, of human human uh, 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 beings, so. Uh, you are right in, the, in that historical sense, but I, I am not sure. But the, I, I, I am not going to advocate my thesis very strong. Maybe you are right that that, that, that should be treated more, uh, more in a more subtle way. But it seems to me that that, that, that again this uh, this uh, point of view of people representing this this view that every culture is somehow uh, separate and and that non comparable is too far away. This is not a question, but a supplement to your explanation. Quite recently, uh, something like, which is called biosemantics or bioinformatics is no, very popular. And I, uh, I ask biologists in Krakow, and they told me something like that, that Evolu biological evolution is very strongly related to devices which protect information. And it is very clear if we look at um, information provided to um, by worms, for example, uh, insects, and, uh, which is very, very general and uh, parents 
in a sense, invest in many, many children, so to speak. But if uh, the level of um, evolution is higher, this investment is more restricted. So species had to organize a special uh, devices to protect information distributed uh, so. among a small amount of children. And logic and mathematics can be considered as devices protecting information. For example, what is consequence operation? How it acts? That we don't lose information which is covered by premises. It's a very important function of logic. Which logic is the best? There is a problem, problematic. However, two valued logic acts uh, in the best way in this respect, because it's the most general. It's one of explanations uh, why this logic was invented, biologically even. I, you know, this is a very tricky question. Anyway, we have logic. Whether, um, if I have a time, yes, I, I would like to tell you a story. Um, in okay. 17th century, was a debate in, in Cambridge about logic used by hunting dogs. And uh, right. the king, uh, James I, um, was Two opponent, two, two protagonists and moderator it was an, an academic discussion. Yeah. And the king, who was a fan of hunting, uh, at one of uh, uh, the participants of this debate was for dogs logic, other against, king rather for. And he said, you, 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 you should give him more credit to dogs them to yourself. So, <laughs> and the, 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 this, the, the, this opponent said, well, so perhaps uh, uh, dogs of king play a special role. Anyway, what is interesting that the uh, 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 label dogs logic was not pejorative in, uh, in this time. So the problem was, it, I think that it was even discussed by Stoics, whether dogs when dogs chooses a way, does uh, it uh, use uh, disjunctions, syllogies or not? Or it is an only okay. an instinct? <coughs> so, you know, oh, thank, th thank you for, for your support. What is uh, quite important for me is that uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, mathematicians, philosophers, mathematics, treat mathematics as uh, concerning some kind of uh, world, independent of physical world, a kind of platonic world very often. And that it might, in, uh, as, as in my opinion, does not allow us to understand the nature of mathematics properly. That is the problem. Now, it seems to me that of that part, or, or, or what, I have, what I said, uh, it's unquestionable that uh, such theories as Euclidean geometry, arithmetic, many other, calculable, theory of calculable functions in the sense of, of the definition of that, the definition of strategy, definitions of, uh, definition or, or rather theory of uh, probabilities theory, all this series was formed in reaction to, to the, the prior, prior experience. Perhaps also some elements of what is in our brain, inborn. Because inborn, not in the sense that, that, that uh, from the very beginning of human race uh, that was inborn, is somehow develops through the, the evolution of men, of humans. Uh, so, uh, so perhaps also some part of what is involved in our, our uh, mind is also represented, represented by, uh, by mathematics. It seems to me that logic is, is, should, be, uh, uh, should be treated in that way. We know that we, are, we made 
various fallacies in in uh, spontaneous reasoning. That that's this exact this 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 uh, kind of uh, investigation will, will carry it out on a large scale. So that that uh, uh, goes again uh, again somehow against the decisions that logic is inborn. But uh, so this is a complicated problem. And, and nevertheless, it seems to me that, that, that somehow also our inborn abilities in, uh, uh, are responsible for mathematics. And, uh, and the idea uh, to study how mathematical investigations are related uh, to factual investigations, just to understand how mathematics was, was developed, uh, it's... Uh, mm, I believe uh, uh, quite quite a promising thing to do. Other questions or supplementations or stories <laughs> It is not quite true that there is only Western logic. I participate in conference in India which was called Western logic meets Indian logic. The difference is that West, Indian logic was never separated cleanly from religion. But within, within this framework, and being cautious not to be punished, some uh, Indian logicians developed certain systems. Uh, but it seems that one consequence, or maybe main point of what you say, is that knowledge is, our knowledge is very human. So if other beings come, then they may have very different kind of knowledge, maybe different logic, different mathematics, because knowledge so much depends on experience. So from that point of view, I didn't understand your answer to the question uh, that Chinese have different knowledge. Maybe it's not only human, but civilization dependent. So your inquirers probably come from the same civilization. And so by extension of your thesis, it, it seems uh, knowledge is civilization dependent and therefore there is no paradox that Chinese have somewhat different kind of knowledge, different kind of logic. And that, and that is, I, think I cannot disagree with you. This is quite obvious that, that there probably there are some intelligent creatures in this world, and perhaps uh, I would say that that it's almost sure that, that there should be some something like intelligence more powerful than human intelligence, and those those creatures how how. For their, their ideas of, of concepts in which they they react to what surround them, and, uh, surround them, and that conceptual apparatus, apparatus to which they escaped, may, can be much more sophisticated than ours our conceptual apparatus. We are all the time developing more and more complex apparatus. That's why Gödel's theorem, uh, uh, incompleteness theorem, works. Uh, uh, think about such a simple example as chess, playing chess. The rules of, of chess are, are very simple. Now you can describe this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the, this game, chess code, in the first order language, and then you can, uh, can examine various things. But unless you introduce the, the, the concept of strategy, uh, which is, again, a mathematical concept, because it is, is taken from game theory you are not able to investigate this, this, this game in a, in a sufficiently deep way. The only, only strategy allows you to, to, to divide the, the, the game into uh, the, the possible continuation of the, of the game into, into trees and examine the, 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 the trees in that way. And that is going to the, the higher, higher order of, uh, of, of, uh, of problems. And you can go higher and higher and higher. And that's why, because you, you are going to complicate and complicate more and more, the, uh, without no end, the, 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 the ideas you can examine, that's why you have this Gödel incompleteness theorem. This is exactly what, that, that is what is in a, in a 
in, in, not not in that intuitive explanation uh, as I <laughs> just volunteer here, but but in in a rigorous way it can it can be proved. So the same is true, of course, about about uh, possibility of some inter intelligent creatures in the world. They probably are much better uh, than we are in in solving various uh, things. So let us invent a, a, a network of computers, and maybe we will be able to fight them somehow. <laughs> as far as the intelligence is concerned. But that those computers should be able not only to calculate, but also they should be able to produce a new conceptual structure. That is the problem, because as long as a computer only calculates, this is a stupid machine. People are able to, to invent just the, the, these things as not only the, the successor, but plus and minus in, in arithmetic, not only, not only, not only, not only uh, the, the, uh, the uh, chess code of uh, chess code, but also the concept of strategy and so on and so on. And that can, can go up without no, no limits. That is the, the, the problem. Although I do have a story about the logic of bees, uh, I'll ask a question instead. Do you believe in private knowledge? Uh, sorry, uh, Do you believe in the idea of private knowledge? Private knowledge? Yes. Of course, uh, I do believe in private knowledge because we, we all have uh, have some private Individual. knowledge. Yes, that's, yes. that's all right. But, uh, well, the public knowledge and the private knowledge are somehow related one to another in, in various ways. Uh, what is the point of your question? Is because uh, that's what I do not follow. Uh, as similar to a private language. Is there a private language? Is there a private knowledge? Okay, that's just brief. Well, yeah, well, anyway, I agree. There is a private language and private knowledge. <laughs> If the knowledge is private, in what sense there would be involvement of consensus? Knowledge is... Well, that was uh, what I said about I unifying, this was. unifying information structure. When you are in some territory, you have the, the idea of this territory. This, this is for sure, because otherwise you cannot move in that territory. Not only you, but also your dog and so on, so on, cat and, and, and everybody knows. Now, if we have some, uh, some, uh, some knowledge about this specific, this specific territory, another specific territory, we, have, we, we are able as individuals to form private knowledge of, the, of, of uh, topographical relation. And that is the, this schema is the, the starting point for, for comparing conceptual information structure of different people. So this is the way from private knowledge we go to public knowledge. I, I <laughs> because I understand that what would be interesting is to refer to, for instance, problem of qualia. Uh, the problem of qualia. Qualia. Now, because this is somewhere where it is difficult to compare how we view the world yeah. and how someone else. How do I know that because someone else at is... Because every, every, every stage of knowledge formation, there is all the time information. So we have at every stage of, of, of forming specific information structure already and knowledge to, to discuss it and to, to, to make this, this, this language more and more uh, uh, sophisticated uh, tool for, for de dealing with that. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is this problem of qualia. Do I see green the same way as you see green, but or maybe I see like important. red? You may, you may see it red, I may agree, but when, when you are looking at this light and you said this is green, green, and I am saying this is green, then we agree how to, to call this, what, what we are seeing. We are, we are now forming uh, difficulties where, where there are no difficulties. I am afraid this is so, <laughs> because if you are too sophisticated in that, you have just to, to speak about every detail, and you, you cannot move ahead. You, you, may, you, can, you have to make some abstraction. 
<laughs> you ask me how, how, how we... Yeah, you, but, you <laughs> yeah, but I understand that if we are talking about private knowledge in the sense, not private in everyday language, but it is something where we cannot apply criteria which would, uh, like consensus or uh, methods which will be objectivization, because then it is not private. But that is doing all the time. All the time we are exchanging views on that and, and, and other things. When you are now in Krakow, you learn to pop up in, in Krakow and somebody asks you, then you are saying, go straight, turn the second right, uh, right and so on. And there is no difficulty with that. But there, there might be some, some serious difficulties, but not on this level. My goodness. This is, there is some, some philosophy behind that, which I must say I hate. Because, because, because this is too, 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 going too far with this, 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 uh, this, this uh, uh, doubts. There are, there are also, we are separating the, 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 the humanity into uh, different tribes. The different tribes dif uh, think differently. That, to a large extent, is true, of course. It's, it's out of question. Then we are dividing this tribe into individuals. And we ask this question of quite kind of gagawai. But uh, you may ask this question, but it is... Sorry. <laughs> Actually, I didn't ask. I tried to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our common master, Kazimierz Ajdukiewicz, he was a Richard teacher and Richard wrote a book about him. According to him, every direct experience is private in this sense in which uh, Kripke or Wittgenstein says. However, it is completely um, invaluable without uh, expressing it by general terms. So according to Idukiewicz, there is no knowledge without language. So even in animals, you can see rudiments of the same situation. They communicate for sure. They have certainly some sensations. However, however you know, they express it. They, they, they provide information. It's, Information is a new, very, very, very good concept. However, this is important that this problem of private knowledge and private language, is, I think, is badly, uh, is badly formulated. Badly formulated. And of course, if people assume that it's something like private language, so there are all problems of normativity and how rules of lang language, uh, and so on, because you cannot explain normativity by appealing only to qualia and, and, and similar I, things. I would add, add to, to what you said, because I completely agree with what was said by you, Jan. And thanks you for mentioning education as a common master. Uh, that the problem with individual language is not on the on the level of qualia, this is nothing practically, but on the level of information structure, I can see some, some events, some, some situation in the world in a completely different way than, than my partner. That's why people sometimes speaking in social questions are not, not able to understand each other because they see the world in a completely different way. It doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't mean that they cannot Cannot, uh, I cannot somehow find the common language. But sometimes it's, it's very difficult to do this. And this is, uh, all on, this is, this is troubles of communications are on, on a very high level, rather than the, this, uh, this level of red and, 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 and green, because this, in this case we somehow find, we will be able to find <laughs> common language. Uh, in your sense, uh, is uh, information structure out there uh, independent of human beings or something uh, always in someone's head? Uh, say again, please, because I... Uh, what, what's the information structure? Is it uh, uh, independent 
independently existing out there, or existing about what? Independently. Independently existing. Uh, in Information structure. If you if you remember this uh, this concept of gestalt. Yeah. Yeah. The gestalt yeah. is example of information structure. Yeah. Gestalt is the reaction. Is the mind's reaction, brain reaction to to to, to what, what was uh, what the information get from from outside. Not not the, the set of sensation, but the gestalt. The same is a concept. Is is a cognitive schema. So that, that for instance, you, you if you go just to use this this yes, it's Minsky example, but I don't remember, to restaurant, that you have some idea of restaurant, and you will know that the, the waiter will go to you and give you menu and, you, and so on and so on. So this conceptual schema and so on, the uh, reaction to, to, to the, the real world, they are somehow encoded in our mind. In your mind is probably slightly different than mine, and in your mind is slightly different than mine, but they are very similar. That's why, why we are, if the experience is the same, because if the experience is different, then they, they, they might be very different. On the case, on the simple, simple problems, because the more complicated is the problem, the more likely is that we will see the world in different way. If we see the world in different way, then we somehow divide into the cultural group. Of course, and they fight this cultural group sometimes, sometimes seriously, some, sometimes not seriously, one from another just to force uh, their own point of view. But anyway, information structure is something to, to which uh, cognitive sociology arrived uh, several decades ago. Uh, and th this is the way in which we, we are able to understand the world. And the, the mathematics is just the abstract representation of some, not all, of course, cognitive structures, uh, information structures. 